morning. I would like to tell you more today about moving towards solutions in controlling Phytophthora and Macadamia. So this is really a long-term journey because Phytophthora, as all soil-borne diseases, are really difficult to control. So my talk today, I will introduce you to Phytophthora on Macadamia, as well as how to manage it with the emphasis on phosphonates. And then I will move over to our research projects, which focuses on phosphonates and during which time of the year Phytophthora cinnamomi colonizes the tree. And then I will end with our future work and acknowledgement. So Phytophthora root rot and trunk canker mainly damages the tree because it destroys the feeder root system causing necrosis and die off of feeder roots, which then eventually causes yellowing and die back uh, almost nutrient deficiency in the tree. This also results in a thinning canopy. The tree loses its leaves and twig die back, which eventually all results in yield losses. An additional symptom that can also be observed is um, the stem cankers. They infect or get infected if there is a wound on the um, stem and due to soil splashing up that contains phytophthora that will then infect the wounds. So these infections on the trunk are not linked to the root, so it's often difficult to deduce if you have both of these symptoms, which is contributing um, to the decline of the tree. But nonetheless, we need to control both of these symptoms, especially sometimes during severe storms. You can get these cankers also on the stems, and branches of the trees due to wounding occurring and the splash dispersal of the pathogen from the soil. So the only Phytophthora species in South Africa that is known to cause the disease is Phytophthora cinnamomi. However, in Australia, Phytophthora palmivir or multifora has also been identified. So therefore, we started a new project this year to also see which species are present in South Africa. Then um, the destructive nature of the disease is due to the asexual phase, which we call sporangia, releasing zoospores. Yeah, so you can see on the slide, those little swimming spores are the destructive uh, stage of the pathogen that will infect the roots. And we therefore also refer to these organisms as water molds because they like water, they need water to infect and um, cause destruction of trees. So if we look at the factors that cause root infections and contribute to that, of course, because these are water mold pathogens, soil moisture is very important because it favors that asexual stage of the pathogen. Then tree phenology as well. So the pathogens mainly infect, we think and hypothesize because we still need to learn a lot about this, infect during a root flush because then a lot of root exudates will stimulate the dormant um, fragments of the pathogen in the soil that will then start producing these swimming spores. So they need some kind of signal to tell them there are food, food around now. And then also fruit bearing stress. So as with all diseases, if the tree stress, then it's easier for the pathogen to get a hold on the tree. Soil type can also influence your infections because uh, especially depending on how much moisture the soil holds. So generally, but not always, um, clay soils will be more prone because um, of wet um, soils occurring. And then also naturally something that we don't understand is the antagonistic microbes in the soil. So sometimes you can also get in a, a sandy soil phytophthora problems just because there's no buffering system in the soil. And then lastly, rootstock can also infect your, affect your infections. Um, these, unfortunately, in, in macadamia, we don't know that much about. Um, but in other crops where there are clear differences in rootstock susceptibility, they definitely influence infection. 
In avocado, we've done some research where we actually have shown that the level of infection during the year is mainly influenced um, by the tree phenology being after harvest. And this is very important for us to know because it is an indication when we need to take root samples to test if a uh, dieback symptom is actually caused by phytophthora. And then of course, all management strategies should be targeted and optimized during the time of the year when you get most of the pathogen in the roots. So the management of phytophthora requires an integrated control. And in avocado, there is what we refer to the peg wheel, which includes all of those factors that must be used to manage the disease because managing the soil-borne disease is really a challenge once it's established in your orchard. So the first two practices is aimed um, at reducing soil moisture. So your soil should not be too wet. So very important ridging, especially if you're on a wet area and a heavy soil type is very important. Also to put in drainage if required. Then irrigation management, don't over irrigate because this will favor the pathogen. Then inorganic nutrition, um, to basically improve your root health. And then calcium, especially in avocado, we use this a lot, is um, applied because it has a mildly funky toxic effect. And in the long run, if you apply it, it will also improve soil aeration. Then organic amendments are also very important, applying mulches and compost because they will enhance the natural anti organistic organisms that occur in the soil. They also offer a buffering capacity against the tree for abiotic stresses. And then they can also improve soil aeration and the drainage in soil. Then the nursery material is very important. You should always start with pathogen-free nursery material. And in other crops such as avocado, the grower usually also selects a tolerant rootstock if he knows that he's going to plant on a soil that will favor the disease. Then lastly, chemicals. If you are on a site that is very conducive, um, a lot of rain, a heavy soil type, then uh, managing the disease without chemicals almost becomes impossible. Um, but again, the chemicals on the south will also not solve your problem. So very important to stack all of these different management practices onto each other in order to manage the disease. So for the chemicals, there are two groups, um, the phosphonates and the methoxylmethanoxan. So the Mephenoxan and metalexyl are only applied to young trees due to the cost of the products. If you apply them to mature orchards, they really become expensive. So phosphonates are more applied um, in older established orchards. The application of both of these chemicals during the first two years um, of planting is extremely important because in a lot of the production regions, the pathogen occurs in river or irrigation water. So even if you start with clean planting material, you can run into problems and trees are very susceptible in those first two years. So rather do a preventative um, treatment with these chemicals to ensure that the tree can get a good establishment. So all of these practices are ultimately aimed at minimizing plant stress and also optimizing root growth. So moving on to more specifically to phosphonates, they are registered against Phytophthora trunk canker and root rot in various countries, however, not in South Africa. The phosphonates are very unique fungicides in that they can be translocated upward and downward in the tree. They're translocated in a saw sink manner. So they're very unique and one of the few chemicals that can actually be used um, for soil borne diseases because most of the others are not systemic in the plant. So this mobility of the product in the tree uh, makes various application methods possible, including trunk sprays, injections, foliar sprays, and soil applications. 
So if we look at the different registrations in the USA and Australia, as for example, just to see which application method is used there, folio sprays are, are used in the USA and Australia, and they have various products registered as such. However, uh, it's important to remember if your tree is in a severe state of decline, the folio sprays um, won't be effective because there's simply not enough foliage to take up the product. Then drip irrigation is only um, registered in the USA and there's a lot of debate how effective this is because in Australia it is not recommended due to problems with consistent efficacy. And then the third application method is bark sprays, um, which is registered in Australia, but very few products actually have this registration in the USA. A bark spray would be beneficial in orchards where your trees start declining severely and they don't have enough foliage for um, applying foliar sprays. So the time of application of phosphonates is a bit controversial because there are two groups basically advertising either regular applications throughout the year at a two to four week or three month interval, whereas others state that you need two applications in the year in spring and autumn, which coincides with your root flush. And the reasoning for this last approach of timing your applications is because phosphite, um, which is the breakdown product of phosphonates, moves in a source sink transla um, translocation. So if you apply them during a root flush, most of the product will go to the tissue of the tree, which needs protection from the pathogen. So this graph just shows the phenology of macadamia trees. So in South Africa, in the avocado, and as well as uh, in macadamia in Australia, we um, think it is best to apply according to the source sink of the tree. So we will apply during the root flush period, which are the two brown peaks on the uh, illustration that you see there. So then we will apply um, usually in August. This is just monthly. Um, months, but the application should be according to tree phenology. So in August, we start applying at the start of the root flush in order to try and avoid or reduce the, the number of applications that goes into the flowering and the nut period. Because again, because of the tra translocation being to the source, then your phosphite will go to your nuts and your flowers. Whereas um, the application in autumn is aimed towards the end of the root flush because research in, South, in Australia has shown that the translocation to roots are more effective when you apply towards the end of the root flush. But in macadamia, for the um, August applications, we don't um, apply towards the end because then that coincides with the fruiting period of the tree. So phosphide is very important in phytophthora control because it's the breakdown product of the um, fungicide in plants. In Australia, there's been done a lot of work on avocado where they have identified what they call a critical root phosphide concentration. So they will sample tree roots and quantify phosphide and recommend growers based on what they get in the tree roots where the more applications should be made. However, it's very important that um, this has not been proved scientifically yet. And there's currently no publication saying that a specific amount of root phosphide is required. So our research aims, which has been funded by, by Saga, is to evaluate phosphonate application methods and timing where we have established two orchard trials with the ultimate aim of registering the products. However, we will more need more trials in order to um, facilitate registration. And then our second um, objective is to determine which time during the year can we find the most um, Phytophthora cinnamomy in tree roots. So for the phosphonate trials, we established two trials, one in Nail Sprite and the other in Makaru. 
So the now spray trial trees are not in a severe state of decline, whereas those at Makaru show the typical um, reduction in canopy density, tree yellowing, um, and twig dieback. So we evaluated six treatments, um, replicated each um, six times. So the table lists the different application methods and treatments that we evaluated. We decided to start with the soil drench rather than through an irrigation um, application, which would be ultimately what one aims at. Um, however, this is very difficult to set up irrigation through a, a randomized trial. So we thought if we can first prove the soil drench concept, then um, semi-commercial um, drip applications might be possible. Then we also have a bulk spray and three different foliar sprays. So the treatment four and five um, has a half dosage and a full dosage um, foliar sprays, whereas the last foliar spray treatment basically um, is evaluating the different application timings where we will apply all of the foliar sprays in autumn when we um, think there's a, a big um, root flush and there's also um, no fruits or flowers um, pulling away the phosphite from the tree roots. So you can see um, treatment five and six have the same dosage per hectare, it's just the one is a split application, whereas the other is not. Very important, if you apply phosphonates as a foliar spray at this high dosage of 400 grams active per 100 liter, you must adjust the pH um, to 7.2 with potassium hydroxide, otherwise you will get leaf burn. So we evaluated the trials which were established in 2019 by taking root samples in autumn and spring after those two applications. And we then used the roots to quantify phosphite um, in the tree roots. And we also determined how much phytophthora was present in each of the treatments. So the two graphs on this slide shows the results of the root phosphite concentrations um, for the autumn and spring applications. So first of all, as I said, the currently is no set value where we know if you have that amount, it is effective. And we also don't know if you have 20 parts per million, if you have 50, whether that is gonna increase your um, management. However, we do know for treatments that are not higher than the control, it's very unlikely that those treatments will be effective. And then we can also use the green line there showing the Australian um, benchmark for um, phosphate concentration in roots, where we can say all of the treatments at the now spray trial is likely to be effective. However, at the Mercado trial, um, it's only the two higher dosage um, foliar sprays that will be effective. And this is expected because remember the Makata trial are those trees that are also like shown on the slide, they are in severe state of decline. So you're gonna need more foliar spray to actually apply to the trees. And also a uh, soil drench is likely ineffective because there are no roots to actually take up the product from the um, soil. Then the two treatments that I have blocked there now are those two different dosages foliar sprays. So you can see the, the bar on the far right is the one where we applied all of the sprays after autumn where we thought the best translocation will be to the roots. And this um, actually was very evident with the autumn because we applied um, so much, but in total there was higher. But as I said, we still um, need more data to determine whether this will actually make a difference in the end. Our phytophthora root quantifications was only done after the autumn application. It's very important that we unfortunately got no significant differences between treatments. And this often occurs um, in tree crops where we will only get in the second year start seeing significant differences in suppression of the pathogen because there is still inoculum in the soil and the pathogen is gonna continue reinfecting the trees. So we therefore cannot make much conclusions about the um, 
pathogen quantifications at this stage, and it will be very important to obtain yield data and tree ratings. Um, also to further quantify the pathogen, um, because usually it takes some times before you will see a difference in this. Then to end with our research results, looking at which season of or month of the year we could get most Phytophthora. So this slide shows the three orchards that we evaluated in the Nalspreit region. So there was quite a variation in um, the different um, amount of Phytophthora that we saw in there. The only consistent thing was that in September, we didn't really um, find the pathogen. So for the other months, um, we could um, easily detect it. So our future research projects will um, focus on completing the phosphonate trials by doing tree ratings and yield assessment, and also continuing the um, colonization studies and new projects is looking at the specific Phytophthora and Pythium species involved and screening new rootstocks um, for tolerance to these. And then I would like to end by acknowledging all of the important people doing the work, my MSc student Zizi, um, that has done all of the lab work. And very important, um, Marita Skuban did the phosphonate trial for us in now spread, and she's also sampling all of the roots um, for the seasonal colonization. And then Alshe also doing the phosphonate trial for us. And Femi is our Australian expert that collaborates with us. And a big thanks to the growers for providing sites and SAMAC for funding. Okay, so there are um, a, a few um, questions there. Um, sure, the first one is, is there a cheap and easy way to potentially diagnose um, Phytophthora in, in macadamias? I think most um, disease clinics will be able to do that for you. Um, it's important to take the correct um, tree and or root sample. So make sure that you send enough roots to the disease clinic. I think um, Gerda has a disease clinic where you can send those to and we can also um, analyze that at Stellenbosch University. But it's very important that you use a reliable diagnostic clinic because we have seen clinics identifying Pythium as Phytophthora, which is, is not good for you um, as a grower. And then, um, yeah, I'm not familiar with the product um, kick, Kickback. Um, and, but I will have a look at that um, to see um, what it does. And then there's also a question from uh, Mark, who is soil type, will that influence the efficiency? efficacy of your phosphonate um, applications. And I think that that will be a, a problem. Um, but unfortunately, there's not enough work really done on this. As I said, in the US, they seem to be using it. So maybe it's not such a big problem. But there are a lot of scientific reasons why um, soil type would affect the efficacy. Um, and then there's also a, a question, why are trees more susceptible during the two root um, flushes? And that is because of the root exudates that favor the stimulation of dormant um, proper gills of the pathogen. 